Hey, how's everybody doing out there? It's a weekend. You ready for the weekend? I'm ready. And I'm ready to get into some Philly sounds. Philly sounds here on the Sounds of Philadelphia. I'm your host, Joey Bruno. Uh, some of you may know me by name. Some of you may know me personally. And uh, we're going to do a quick 20 minutes here. Uh which is going to be pretty hard tonight because I'm featuring two double disc CDs. So we got a lot of music to cover and uh, I'm going to get right into it. We're going to start out with my buddy, uh, long time, most valuable player, Philadelphia area. He's played with everybody under the sun, basically. And uh, along with uh, being Todd Rundgren's uh, touring keyboard, uh, he played uh, keyboards and sang background vocals uh, for oh many years from 1995 uh, up until about 2018 uh, so he was a, a consistent band member in Todd's uh, touring touring band uh, he's toured with Jefferson Starship and uh, you know in in Philadelphia he's been here forever it seems you know uh, a vital vital musician uh in the philadelphia area and we are blessed to have him i gotta say i gotta say because he has contributed so much to the landscape of this city okay so let's get right into it here we go this is john's new album it's called another thrilling episode which i love i love the title even that got me right there uh it is a Double disc CD. See all that? There's a lot of songs. A lot of songs. First disc, 12 songs. Second disc, 12 songs. So we got 24 songs from John Forensic, a.k.a. Forensic. I believe he's going under that name now. Just plain and simple. I like it. And uh, we're going to get right into it and uh, start right out. So this is an instrumental album. Uh, I would definitely say uh, it... It has overtones of, well, more than just overtones. It's a, a lot of beautiful, phenomenal 70s, 80s, you know, some 80s uh, jazz rock fusion. Okay, but I don't want to just label it as jazz rock fusion. There's some prog elements. There's some uh, electronic elements. There's some atmospheric uh, elements, Latin uh Boy, John just, uh, uh, he just covers everything, everything, everything you could possibly want to hear if you're really uh, into diverse, stylistic, instrumental music, okay? So let's get into it. Track one, uh, beautiful, man. Uh, here, uh, here and back. So uh, if that gives you a little hint as to uh what this track might sound like and i'm th going to say john was very inspired uh by jeff beck on this so it's 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 i would i would say it's a uh you know a tribute to the late great jeff beck who we all uh i i know myself you know i literally cried i cried the day jeff uh, passed and i know a lot of other people did too that one really hurt uh but you got people like John continuing in this this tradition that uh, started maybe uh, you know it came to fruition you know in popularity with Jeff Beck's Blow by Blow, but it was long before that you know things were going on in the in that in that genre of music. Uh, starting way back, Miles Davis you know probably is actually the forefather of of the genre. So uh, we got uh, here and back. And, you know, what can I tell you? It, right from the first, uh, first, first note, uh, I'm thinking Jeff Beck, uh, Wired, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, let, me, let, me, let me play a little, little clip, a little, little bit. This is what you're going to get right off the bat, right out of, right out the gate. Let's listen to it for a minute. Where do you hear the guitars come in, man? Just phenomenal. Wow. 
little bit of blue wind. Jeff Beck, blue wind. Unbelievable guitar work, and I do believe that John is playing all the guitars on the whole CD. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. So that's a little taste there. Uh, so uh, yeah, the personnel. While I'm while I'm speaking of that on the on the record, uh, some stellar playing. Uh, a couple of people uh, I want to. Definitely mention uh, would be uh, Richie DiCarlo on drums, just playing some phenomenal, phenomenal drums on that. On, on most, on, uh, uh, I would say about uh, three quarters of the album is Richie. And then we have uh, the, the amazing Prairie Prince from the Tubes and Todd Rundgren's touring band and also Jefferson Starship and a, a, million, a million bands, a million bands. Legendary uh, and Chasm Sultan himself from utopia makes a few appearances on the record uh and then we have john anthony playing a lot of percussion throughout it van romaine also plays some drums on this uh he's from the steve morse band steve morse of the dixie dregs another great great jazz rock fusion band uh but it uh, as far as i can tell uh except in a few instances John plays pretty much all the guitars and the keyboards. So primarily known as a keyboard player around the city and the world, uh, little did we know, John's been practicing. <laughs> when you hear the guitar licks with this record and the, the just phenomenal, uh, you know, arrangements that just showcase some incredible guitar playing, some phenomenal arrangements, phenomenal production, I know I use the word phenomenal too much. I'm trying to cut back, but I can't help it. It's phenomenal. What do you want me to do? It's the best word to describe it, you know? Uh, anyway, so, yeah, it's it's just jam-packed with uh, just so much phenomenal music. So, next track in is, let me get my notes here, uh, Living in New York. Uh, which is now now we're into a, f a kind of a funk groove, uh, beautiful bass on this, and reminds me a whole lot of the uh, Brecker brothers, uh, Michael and Randy Brecker, the Brecker brothers uh, albums that they put out in the seventies, uh, particularly uh, an album called Heavy Metal Bebop, which uh, I, I get a lot of that kind of thing. Uh, there's a there's, there's a little bit of a Latin feel. There's a break in there with some Latin percussion type uh, uh, feel to it. Uh, just just another great song. I mean, we're another barn burner. Another barn burner. Uh, next song is Stepped On. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to review every single song because uh, I only do 20 minutes here and I'm already pressed for time. So I'm going to take it up to uh, disc one, the end of disc one. And uh, and actually a little bit over that, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the title track, which is the first song on site on the on the second disc. So uh, yeah, living in New York, great, phenomenal song. Next song is stepped on, okay, and uh, basically that uh, that is a slow shuffle, bluesy, lots of double track guitars just you know just washing through the mix if you're i i recommend headphones for this album because uh the way it's produced and the engine and engineered uh there are just a lot of great headphone moments on this record so yeah stepped on shuffle feel beautiful shuffle uh bluesy great next song is uh dragon song which I don't know if you did it on purpose, John, or it just was an accident. But we we get a lot of Mahavishnu Orchestra overtones in this, or let's say inspiration, maybe on John's part. Uh, it's in three four time signature. Uh, you know, it does eventually dissolves into a six eight kind of da, 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 you know you get into that kind of feel. Uh, 
just uh, again a lot of Beck Jeff Beck style influence guitars going on on this uh, this track reminds me of Jeff Beck's album Guitar Shop that he did with uh, Terry Bozio and Tony Hymas. Uh, very much in that in that mode. One of my favorite Jeff Beck albums, and I, I think a lot of Jeff Beck fans would agree. Uh, so that's uh, Dragon Song. Next up is uh, Never, Never Say Never, uh, which is, again, we're back into funk territory. Uh, we're in a 7-8 time signature. Smooth, though. Not a 7-8 time signature that you would... Uh, you would maybe not even re recognize. Very smooth. Uh, and I love odd time signatures, and they are all over this album. Lots of that kind of stuff going on. Uh, lots of double-tracked uh, guitar and synth lines, similar to what Jeff Beck used to do with Gian Hammer when they would double, and you could barely tell who, what was the guitar and what was the keyboards because Gian Hammer had a way of making that, uh, that synthesizer sound very guitar-like. So I'm hearing that I may, it may be just two double track guitars, but it sounds to me like it's a double tracked uh, situation of guitar and keyboards, and uh, I really like that. That song is is uh, you know a, a winner for me. I I, I really like it. Uh, beautiful Hendrix inspired wah wah guitar solo in the middle. Uh, you know to uh, to you could uh, kind of. Uh, as the song progresses, it kind of it kind of just flies in and just wow, bam, you know, just just hit you hit you where <laughs> where it hurts, man. It's it's heavy, it's heavy guitar, man, heavy duty, you know, blitzkrieg of guitar. Uh, just you know, and again that Jan Hammer synth kind of sound, that patented sound that he had. Uh, next song is Sundowner, very slow. 3-4 time, like a waltz a little bit. Uh, very warm, uh, embracing kind of song. And, you know, after the uh, after the first uh, silo of manic, insane jazz fusion, uh, it's nice to take a little breather with Sundown. Uh, saxophone playing, uh, there's a few saxophone players, I believe. I may be mistaken, but uh, on... Uh, on uh, Sundowner, uh, I believe it is Robert Martin on tenor sax, and he's on quite a few tracks on the album, which gives it a very, a very, a little, little bit of a different flavor, you know. So you may have that Jeff Beck thing going on, but uh, I do recall I don't think Jeff Beck ever had any saxophone soloing within his song. So that was a brilliant, brilliant move uh, by John to bring in John, uh, Robert Martin on, on saxophone. Uh, as I said, he's on quite a few songs, and he adds a, a just a great flavor to every song that, that that he touches on this on this record. So again, beautiful song. Uh, next song is a uh, exotic uh, voodoo baby, and uh, exotic voodoo baby is uh, has a lot of jungle, atmospheric, you know. Uh, that sound we all know that sound of the jungle from from movies you know you can hear it in the background birds and uh, several species of small furry animals you know what i mean that's a little little pink floyd uh, thing i'm throwing in there did you catch it i hope so uh anyway yeah just a uh, very relaxing uh, lilting it's lilting you know it just it just it just washes over you and i love the use of vibraphone do you people know what a vibraphone is so it's that big instrument that's set up like a keyboard and instead of a keyboard you play it with mallets and uh it's been used uh by lionel hampton was the uh, big xyl uh, xylophone player uh, or uh, vibraphone player i'm sorry uh and uh it's been used in uh, the fusion the fusion years of the band Gong. They used it uh, exclusively, and it really adds such a nice touch to this song. Uh, I really appreciated that as a drummer and percussionist myself who can play vibraphone. It was really wonderful to hear that. Uh, next song up is Maxine, and 
similar to uh, if you listen to Jeff Beck's Wired, uh, quite a few songs are named after women. And that's uh, Narada Michael Walden wrote those songs. The phenom- phenomenal, I said it again, phenomenal drummer <laughs> who played with Ma Vishnu and his solo albums are great. And he played with Jeff Beck and Tommy Bolin and you know, long, long history. So, uh, yeah, I'm getting a feel from from uh, this song, Maxine. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's... it's uh, Again, a little bit, a little bit of Jeff Beck going on, but funk overtones on top of that, and uh, around halfway into the song, in comes John with just some blistering, blistering guitar work. Uh, you know, a- an amazing guitar tone. You know, his effects, his amp combination, whatever kind of guitar he's using, you know, it's he's nailing it. And uh, that goes throughout the whole album. I mean, John's playing throughout the whole album, you know, which is very surprising to me because I always think of John as a keyboard player. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know what he's better at at this point. He, I always thought he was just the most incredible keyboard player. Now I have to add guitar into the mix, and I'm not sure which one he does better or if he just does them both just as great so great song maxine uh next song is cheap shots uh just wall of guitar that's all i could tell you wailing wall of guitar throughout this whole track another great one uh lone ranger boogie uh lots of those what i spoke about earlier there's unison guitar keyboard you know double tracked uh, harm, in harmony, you know, uh, kind of interplay. Uh, another, just another, another great song. Uh, Lone Ranger Boogie is the next one, and again, lots of unison keyboard guitar uh, textures throughout. Uh, another, another beautiful. That's actually one of my favorites. Uh, I really enjoyed that, and let me turn the page here a lot of songs (laughs) let me get to my notes here uh next song is whodunit uh kind of like a chugging a chugging rhythm on this one really gets you you know as soon as it kicks in you know you want to sounds like a train coming down the tracks just heading towards you you know it's just a just a great feel and a great change of pace uh which uh, another thing about this album is you know, you never know what's going to come to next. I mean, you're you're thinking you're in this one kind of a genre. Next thing you know, John turns it around, and you're enjoying something else. You know, completely uh, in another realm, let's say. So that that's consistent throughout the whole the whole record. Uh, next song, Trepidation Thirteen. Now we get very soft again, very atmospheric, very. Uh, kind of a wash washes over you that kind of thing and very much features that vibraphone that we spoke about earlier matter of fact starts with that vibraphone right off the bat and uh you know gives it a little bit of a lounge feel in my, my may i say sorry john if i'm <laughs> overstepping my bounds here but yeah it's uh it's 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 just a phenomenal song i love it i love it and uh well I'm going to hit us with the last song here, although, you know, I'm, I'm ending here an under-thrilling episode, but beyond that, we have, uh, we have I Know That You Know, which there's a Mahavishnu song that's You Know You Know, so uh, you know what to expect there. Uh, Velvet Rendezvous, Rendezvous, Work It Down, River Daze, D-A-Z-E, Larry's Ferrari, that is a Philadelphia joke. Our play on words, I should say, that most of you my age will will get. Larry's Ferrari. Ferrari, sorry. If you remember uh, Sundays, I think it was at noon, we had a guy playing this big, giant organ. His name was Larry Ferrari, and he played every Sunday at around noon for our enjoyment, and he's a Philadelphia icon. So I think that the... Uh, the connection is is Larry Ferrari on Larry's Ferrari. Uh, okay. Uh, bad connection. Smoke and mirrors. Right from wrong. Scene of the crime. 
quicksand decisions and sunset cocktail samba and it just moves along in the same same kind of a uh, you know uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for ha uh, linear linear it moves along in a linear fashion uh, if, if you've heard what I just said about the previous uh, 13 songs it continues and it's just you know bottom line you if you are into melodic uh, instrumental music with touches of j jazz jazz fusion prog rock uh, straight up rock and roll there's a good bit of that on here too uh, you know, lots of, lots of, uh, just phenomenal guitars, keyboards, uh, great drum work by, uh, by, uh, the three drummers who are, uh, the guests that I mentioned earlier on the album and, uh, that'll wrap it up. Okay. So, uh, John, thank you for sending me this. And John was also so gracious enough to send me his whole catalog. So down the road. I can guarantee you we'll be reviewing some more of John's work, uh, which is quite voluminous, vol, volu, voluminous, voluminous, right? Uh, I believe he sent me seven CDs, uh, so this is his seventh release. And I, I'm telling you, everyone is different than the other. My favorite kind of artists, you know, Bowie, Prince, Jeff Beck, uh, you know, Todd Rundgren, these guys, you know, I like, I like bands or artists who you never know what they're going to do next. And John is definitely one of those. I've been just pouring through all the, all the CDs he sent me in. And you can, you can see, uh, you know, he has one album that uh, he covers a Nas song on. It's a lot of straight up rock and roll. And uh, I'm just uh, thrilled about another thrilling episode. And I can't stop listening to it. Thanks, John. Love you, brother. Okay. Uh, what do we got left here? Well, I'm already at 22 minutes. That did not work out too well, did it? So, what I'm going to do is give you a quick rundown of this. This is... Oh, boy, I'm getting a lot of glare on these, uh, these jewel cases. Let's check this out. Still getting glare, huh? Queterology, Volume 1. This is a guy, uh, I, I, I kind of know him uh, here and there. I've had a relationship with Ken off and on. Yeah, not too much. It's not like we're close friends or anything. All lies. All lies. He is not only one of my best friends in the whole entire world, he's a mentor. I played in The Secret Kids back in 1980. For a while, uh, version I guess it would be version three, version two, however you, however far you want to go back, and uh, we had some great times uh, playing the London Victory and the Bijou Cafe and here, there, and everywhere. And to this day, you know, I consistently go out and see Ken. Uh, one of <laughs> I'm speechless sometimes. Ken's songs are just solid gold to me you know uh as a songwriter there's nobody better there's nobody better in philadelphia and i would venture to say there's nobody better in the whole united states maybe the world and i'm gonna go that far and i know some of his fans that are friends of mine would would mirror that uh, sentiment uh he's just unbelievable and he keeps going like the energizer buddy bunny he's uh he's not going to stop either you know he threatens to stop but we know he's not going to stop so anyway what this is it's a two disc compilation okay there's disc one see how this one opens there we go on this side here's disc two and what this is it's a compilation and what we get here is some studio, a lot of studio stuff, and also a lot of live stuff uh, from several bands, various bands, and uh, 
you can uh, you can just see you know there's the track listing here okay and uh, it's just got everything right off the bat man on the moon the original seven inch single uh, he's at it again live at tramps in New York uh, bifocals what am I talking about one of my favorite songs I love what am I talking about uh, January, February, okay, the most, one of the most heartfelt renderings, uh, just, oh my god, when you're at a Ken Queter show, and he plays January, February, you can hear a pin drop, you can hear a pin drop, it's just a magnificent work of art, and lyrically, nobody can touch him. Nobody can touch him. Next, we have Patti Smith live at Glassboro State College. Torn Rice, which, as Ken knows, is my numero uno Ken Queter song. My all-time favorite. Never gets old. And this version here is live at Tramps in New York again. Uh, Apology. Uh, what an incredible, incredible song. That's a studio recording produced by Ben Vaughn. Uh, Suicide, great, great, great song. Susie Said So, uh, a Philadelphia classic, a Philadelphia legend. What can I say? Everybody knows that was the other side of the Man on the Moon single I previously mentioned. Uh, Old Tan Dotson, uh, which I'm proud to say I'm playing on. Hmm. Very simplistically, but I'm playing on it doesn't require a lot, so I played to the song. Uh, next, Outrage at Walsh's, which is just just that. It's Ken on one of his <sighs> outrages. A short little ditty. Uh, places, uh, be places, beautiful song, beautiful song. One I hadn't been aware of up until only a few years ago. Uh, Pandemonium in the Scare. Uh, it's it's his prog rock song. Well, he has a few pro what I consider prog rock songs. Long, lots of changes, lots of, you know, insane tempo changes and chord changes. Just, just phenomenal lyrics. Uh, Trouble on the Line, Freedom from Sense, Two Little Bugs. Cute little song your kids might enjoy, I think. Uh, Cab Jam which I'm playing on, and is actually the, uh, the outro. The this was live from the Bijou, I believe, yeah. Live from the Bijou, uh, it's basically just about a minute of the outro of Man's Got a Gun that we performed that night that went on for oh, a good 10, 12 minutes. Uh, Ken allowed me to do a little quick minute and a half uh, Keith Moon-style drum solo in there. So, uh, a little disappointed that that's all I got. It was just a little 58 seconds. I, whoever did this album, put this together, whoever edited it, I am severely, severely mad at you. You cut out that it was, it was, I remember the night. I remember playing it like it was yesterday. And it rocked so hard. And Mr. Editor, why not include the whole song? 58 seconds of the last 58 seconds, I should say, of the song. Anyway, I'm not going to go there. Uh, where were we? Uh, Cab Jam, word, Words and Dreams. Uh, another great one of Ken's phenomenal lyrics, you know, all that. Uh, Heroin, one of his classics. Imagination, another one of his songs that I consider a little bit of a prog rock song almost. Again, Doctor Says, another one. These are lengthy songs where Ken wrote changes and uh, the, the songs are just all over the place, you know, stylistically uh, when he does these longer, uh, complex pieces, let's say. Uh, Jack Kerouac, ah, you know, Jack Kerouac, when are you coming back, right? We, uh, when we see him live, we just, we love that song. It's much requested. Uh, Mommy and Daddy, formerly known, I believe, as That's a Job for Mommy and Daddy. Just a pop, a brilliant pop 
epic. Okay, in a, in a parallel universe, that song, which was released on a single with Back On You on the B-side, you know, is absolute top 10 billboard, as, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I hear that song, It's I sing it all day long, I can't get it out of my head, uh, just, just love it, love it, love it, and I wish that somewhere, somewhere, someone down the line would have released that and... And, and work some radio stations, and maybe it could have been one of those songs that a radio station played, people heard it, they start requesting, momentum builds, and the next thing you know, Ken Queter has a uh, maybe a, a top 20, top 10 Billboard ch- uh, charted song. I really true think it's that good. Okay, so, uh, Mommy, Diane, and Crackhead, what can I say? You'd have to just go see Ken live to, to witness crackhead uh diablo man a song that i loved playing when i was in the band uh again subtlety then madness and more subtlety and just you know just blows your mind man blows your mind it's one of those kind of songs cassidy's bible another standard in his repertoire uh to bring things down a little uh, just again, the lyrics on these, the lyrics on these folkier songs, the, the slower, the ballads and stuff, you know, are just so introspective and so, you know, heartwarming and they, they really hit you here. They get you thinking, you know, you really start thinking, you know, and that's, that's the, the sign of a phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal song if ever I've, you know, heard one. So, Man of Stone comes up next. I'm running out of time. i got to hurry up here. Sorry. Things got away from me with uh, John CD. Uh, New Hampshire, again, one of my favorites. Mark Polo, Jigger of Rye, Candy Store, another much-requested song at Ken's shows. My Uncle Made Me Do It. You could just imagine what that's about. Uh, Turning Myself in Two, Furl and Getty. Uh, Remember Me, uh, written by his uh, his mentor and the incredibly talented Billy Scheid, who we lost, oh, quite a while back, and who uh, really, without Billy Scheid, I don't know what direction Ken would have ended up in. He would have, he would have been out there and performing and, uh, and, you know, making us all very happy with his music, I'm sure, no matter what it was. But I believe Billy Scheid had a very big influence on Ken, and uh, he'll tell you that too. You know, also he, he he admits to that. So "Remember Me" is a song that you will remember. Uh, again, another Ken Queter song. Once I hear it, it's in my head for the entire day. I may even be singing it when I wake up the next morning. So what a, what an incredible song! And then the end. We end with a song called, well, not really a song, a spoken word kind of a collage thing, uh, just 26 seconds long. It's just a little out, it's a little creative little outro for the, to wrap up the whole two disc set. So that's Ken Queter, Queterology, Volume 1. Uh, I'm going to have links down in the descriptions here where you can buy John's uh, new CD and also any one of his uh, six or seven CDs he's released. Uh, I don't know what the status is on Ken's record, uh, but, uh, you know, it's it's from 2015, I believe, is when this came out. And I know they're still available somewhere. I have to track Ken down, which anybody who knows him is not an easy thing to do. And as soon as I can, I will also add a link where you can buy uh, this and any of any other of Ken's uh, discs. Who you know, like John, uh, Ken, I believe has around a total of eight or nine, eight or nine CDs, and uh, three comp. There's a Queterology Volume One, Queterology Volume Two. They're both compilations. Uh, and one other compilation, which is, uh, the name escapes me, <laughs> with the red and blue, with all his flyers on it, uh, that was the first compilation, and, uh, I, I, I may like that one even a little more than this one, I'm not sure, they're all just so good, you know, 
So anyway, that's it, folks. John Forensic. Let me grab this. Another thrilling episode. That's a new release. Our legacy pick for the week is Ken Queter, my main man. Queterology Volume 1. And uh, I will see you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. We'll be doing, uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, I have it over, where do I have it? Do I have it here? No, I don't have it here. Uh, well, anyway, I'll surprise you with it. I actually forgot where I put it, and I forgot what I was doing next week. Ah, Tony Mecca. Tony Mecca, who also has, uh, he's just released his sixth CD, uh, and it is phenomenal. I'm using that word again. Nah, absolutely incredible. Uh, just, just, just amazing. And for our legacy recording next week, I have it right back here. We're going to get into this. Phillies. Phillies, African... Well, the... I think it should be in the Guinness Book of World Records, maybe. I'm not sure. But uh, Philadelphia's first all Afro Afro-American uh, straight-up punk band. A little bit of glam in there. A little bit of this and that. But uh, I was gifted this by one of the members of the band. And uh, it's got some some interesting uh, things inside here, but I'm not going to show them to you this week. I'll surprise you. Uh, and that will be it for next week. Tony Mecca, pure hell. All right. Have a great weekend. Have a great week. Follow me on Facebook. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll put maybe that link in there too. I don't really like to self-promote on these particular shows. I have so many great things coming up. In, in the new year, you're not going to believe it. We're going to be doing interviews with, I mean, everybody's asking me. I, I got people that you want to listen to coming at me, messaging me. Hey, man, can you do an interview with me? Can I be on the show? So we're going to really start branching out. Uh, these are all just kind of a test run, these early ones. But I have so many great ideas that I'm going to interject into these podcasts. Not to mention I'm going to be doing several other podcasts. Uh, one, I asked people on Facebook, would you like to see me go through my vast uh, collection of limited edition you know, box sets, uh, rarities, uh, DVDs, CDs, vinyl, you know. So I, I have a, I don't have the, the biggest collection in the world, but I'm pretty proud of what I have. I have a, a very good bit of very rare uh box sets and CD releases and DVD releases and Blu-rays and all that kind of thing. So I'm going to be doing another show, Collector's Corner, I think I'm going to be calling it, and that'll be twice a month. So that's coming up, and uh, I wanted to just remind everybody real quick about something. Uh, my old friend and bandmate, uh, Alice Cohen, who was in the band's Fun City, the Moroccos, I was also in that band with her i'm on their single which i'm also going to do a review of it's coming soon and of course the vels and she moved to new york and she's had a brilliant amazing solo career again we're talking five six seven records uh, she's put out everyone as good as the as the last just alice is a phenomenal talent uh a songwriter of excellence you know we're a great vocalist great musician you know uh, her background uh, is just you know in written in stone here in philadelphia so many bands so many great uh shows you know that were put on by all these bands so uh yeah so i would ask that you go and see it. It's going to be a holiday thing. It's at Frankie Bradley's. Probably not going to be able to see that. I'll read it to you. Uh, Frankie Bradley's, 1320 Chancellor Street. The Rockin' Holiday Review uh, with uh, Ellen Britton, Tom Cohen, and then Alice Cohen with a full band. Uh, she hasn't played in Philly in four years. So I ask you, please, buy tickets. Uh, 
Uh, if you go to my profile on Facebook, I have it there with all the links and everything you need to buy tickets and go see that. And uh, in January, we're having another uh, Philly Loves Bowie week. So that's going to be a great, exciting week with a lot of, uh, a lot of energy behind this. And uh, Candy Volcano, one of the best Bowie, you know, tr I guess we're calling them tribute bands now. But they really inject a lot of their own, you know, their own style and flavor into it. And they just do a phenomenal stage show. Uh, they're going to be playing at the Ardmore Music Hall on, uh, what's the date? Uh, the, let's see, one, six, the 24th of January. So uh, I would ask that you go see both of those shows and support live music in Philly and buy physical CDs, vinyl, or cassettes if you want, or 8-tracks. Just buy physical media, and prefer preferably new, so these artists can get, you know, their cut of the money and make a living. Uh, that would be nice, wouldn't it? To make a living as a musician. It's rarely done, but it can happen. As long as you support Philly music. Bye-bye. I'm going to hit the stop button now. And we went way, way long. We doubled our time. We're at 40, 42 minutes. I hope you hung in. I didn't mean it to go this long. I like to keep them at 20 minutes. But if you hung in, Sim Salabim, all my love to you. Sending a virtual hug out to all my friends and followers on Facebook and on YouTube and on my Philly Music Connection page and my Todd Rundgren uh, Facebook groups and it goes on and on and on. I'm busy writing my book. Uh, the book that I wrote a passage, uh, a chapter for called The New Wave Almanac is going to uh, publication as we speak. Should be out in a few months. And I was given the chance to write a whole, whole uh, chapter on the Philly music scene of the 80s, you know, and I think I tried to, you know, that's, it's hard to do that just in one short chapter, but I think I pulled it off, I covered every genre of music, I was not uh, segregated at all in my choices of bands, and I talk about the clubs here, uh, basically it's late 79 to mid six, mid 80s, late 80s, that, that time period. So as soon as it comes out, I'll let all you guys know. The other contributors are all, uh, I'm, in, I'm in good company. People from Ultravox, Sham69, uh, uh, Simple Minds. I mean, just, just across the boards, all those bands from back in, uh, you know, that period, late 79 to late 89. They're all in there, and I'm in there with them. Woo! I'm in good company, right? I was asked. I was actually asked to do it. So somebody up there likes me. I hope you do too. Take care and have a great week. Bye-bye.